Hey there everyone and welcome to this short video on 3ds Max. My name's Robin and I'm the technical director here at Man and Machine UK. I've been using Max for on and off 20 years or so for modeling and workflows from Revit to workflows from Inventor, um, animations and just generally playing around. By all means I wouldn't call myself an absolute expert in Max but generally speaking I know my way around the application really well um, and I can get some good results when it comes to animations and renders. One thing that you'll find with Max is certainly if you're new to it is it's so comprehensive. There are so many different bells and whistles and features and functions in there that you're able to use. And most of you just won't use all of them because you won't need to. So what I intend to do in this and some other similar videos that we're about to release is just do some real top down from scratch example exercises that, that really don't have any fluff in them. They're there to show you how from a completely blank canvas, you can start producing some results in Max, whether it's a nice render, whether it's using Arnold for the first time, whether it's doing some initial animations or rigging, we hope to have something here that, that helps you get started in using Max. I'm using Max 25. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using 25, 24, 21, 20, anything older, the process that I'm doing here is, is kind of the same, certainly in this video. And what we're going to be looking at is rigging and how we can start doing some very simple animations of linked components inside of Max. Nothing overly complicated, just real top level stuff. Um, so I'm starting with a blank canvas so you're able to follow along should you want to. And what we're going to do with our blank canvas is we're going to go ahead and draw a box. So let's go to our create panel, draw a box, click and drag your mouse and then click again to specify the height. It doesn't really matter what size of these are. I'm just gonna say that this first one is maybe um, a length of about 100. And let's say that we want to have a width of about five by five. And then with this component, I'm just gonna rotate it around. I'm gonna press A so the angle snaps is on. And then just rotate it around 90 degrees. And I'm just gonna eyeball it so it's um, just above my base plane here. I'm using L to go to this left-hand view, just to eyeball it just above the floor and then P to go back to my perspective view. And there we have our first component. I'm then gonna create a cylinder. I'm gonna once again click and drag my mouse, let go, move it up and click again. Tidy up the size, a radius of about, I don't know, five is pretty good for this. And then let's say that we want a height that's a little bit thicker of our, um, than our actual components here. Let's go to about 6.5. Let's rotate this around once again by 90 degrees. Select it, choose our move tool, go into the left hand view, and I'm just gonna eyeball this. There's nothing complicated about this process that we're doing. I'm literally just gonna eyeball this and place it so it's roughly sat at the top of my, uh, my vertical beam there. Something like that is absolutely fine. Now I want to have a couple of copies of this. So I'm going to select both with a click and hold, drag my mouse left to right or right to left to select those. Choose rotate, hold down shift, and then rotate by 90 degrees to the left. That will create a copy of those components. I can then go into my left view and I can just eyeball these so that they are sat, something like that. Do the same thing again, but only with the beam this time, and click and drag it to the left-hand side so that you've got something that looks like that. It really doesn't need to be perfect for this example. Um, you can tidy this up with your own examples later, um, but for the purpose of this, that's the kind of result that we're looking to get. Now, once we've got this, we wanna start making these move and we want them to move with each other so that if I drag this bottom one around, it moves the rest of the components with it. If I rotate this one, it rotates these components, but not this one. Let's go ahead and set that up. And actually the process is really straightforward inside of Max. All we need to use is select and link between the child and the parent. The tools up here on the left, select and link, you want to click and hold your mouse over the component that you wish to be linked, so the, the child component in the relationship. 
In this case, this cylinder is going to be linked to this vertical beam. Hover over the cylinder, click and hold your mouse, move the dashed line over your, over your, um, your beam, sorry, and then let go. If we just go back to our move command, if I move the cylinder, you see no difference. It's still a cylinder. If I move the vertical beam, however, you can see that the cylinder moves with it. Doesn't matter whether I'm moving it vertically, horizontally, or rotating it. This component is linked. It moves with each other. Let's continue and link the rest. So select and link this horizontal beam with this cylinder. This cylinder with this horizontal beam and this horizontal beam with this cylinder. We don't need to link everything back to the start. The reason being is this component is linked to the first beam and then everything else in turn is linked to its retrospective, retrospective sorry, component. Meaning if I select this one and move it or rotate it or whatever it is I want to do to it, all of the rest will move with it. But if I select this one and rotate it, it will only move the affected components. The same with this one on the end. Helps if I grab the right part of the gizmo, there we go. So we have something that works as you would expect it to from the purposes of a simple um, lever arm or, or, or crane arm. Um, and it really is as simple as that. We've got components that now act like they should. If I grab this component and move it to the left-hand side, the wider arm moves with it. If I move this one, the whole arm moves with it. Now let's just make a couple of modifications. Let's grab this second beam and let's make this second beam, rather than five by five, let's go for three and a half by three and a half. And then on this one, rather than five by five, let's make it two by two. So I'm just resizing these components. Although I've modified them, the links will still um, be in place, but I might just want to do some alignments to make sure that these are nicer aligned. To do that, I'm gonna select my um, top view and I'm gonna go and select my, one of my cylinders. I want to make sure that the, um, the pivot, you can see it just here on the end of the cylinder, I kind of want that to be in the middle so that I can line everything up. So I'm going to select my cylinder. I'm going to go on the right hand side to this toolbar and choose hierarchy. And I'm going to choose to affect the pivot of this object only. Meaning that when I use my movement tools, I'm just moving the pivot point. The origin point, if you like, of that component. I can either eyeball it or just click this button that says center to object. I'd like you to do that on each one of your cylinders. So select your cylinder and choose center to object. Once you've done that, we can select the cylinder and we can make sure that on the X, it's sat in the zero position. From there, I'm going to go and take a look at my boxes. We've made two boxes ever so slightly smaller. But we can see that at the moment, this, uh, this pivot point is actually already centered, certainly around the X. Um, it's not centered with regards to the overall um, position. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to affect the pivot and center to the object on all of our individual components. If we go and have a look at what's happened now, if I select my rotation and move around, everything's as it was, everything's still working but it just gives us a better ability to align these components to make them look better when it comes to manipulating and moving. So I can now select my, um, my arms and I can make sure that all of my arms are sat in the correct position, which from a movement perspective, I want them to be looking top down, zero in the X, so that they all align with regards to their X position. 
Now you might find that everything starts jumping out of place because they're still linked. So what we can do is we can grab all of those, we can unlink them, that will take the links off. Then we can go and position them correctly so that they're all aligned in the X. You can do that as a group selection or you can do all of them at once. It's completely up to you. I'm just gonna do them individually so you can follow the process as much as you need to. We've got zero, 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 and zero. So these are all now perfectly aligned around their center. And then almost intentionally for practice, go and grab your select and link, child to parent, child to parent, child, parent, child, parent. Now we've got something that's much better aligned. And actually we can continue at this point should you want to. So we can go back to create. We could choose to create um, another cylinder, for example, maybe a slightly larger cylinder that's slightly thicker. We can move this cylinder so that it's uh, in line with our initial vertical shaft, like so. And then we can link our vertical to this adding another top level parent because this now moves everything and this now rotates everything. This process can continue to make something as complex as you would like, but essentially what we have is something that's now fully controllable using these three cylinders. So maybe what we want to do is make an animation for this. I'm just gonna select this far end cylinder, and I'm gonna move it inwards. Not, sorry, not the, cylinder, not the beam, the cylinder. And I'm just gonna move this inwards. So it's about there. I'm then gonna grab this component and I'm going to rotate it around itself so that it's at 90 degrees and vertical. And then I'm going to grab this cylinder and I'm going to move it into itself, like so. Again, these aren't quite aligned in the other axis, but you get the general idea. From here, I have a timeline at the bottom. These are frames. So if you wanted to make a video that was 60 frames per second, between zero and 60 on this timeline would be one second. 30 frames per second between zero and 30 would be 30 frames per second. You can increase or decrease this as you want to by coming down at the bottom. You've got this little clock here, time configuration. That allows you to come in and choose how many frames per second you're working at. Is it American? Is it UK? Is it custom? And then we can choose how long we want the animation to be. I'm going to change my time to be 250 in length. And then from there, I'm going to work with my slider and my components and a selection of auto key and manual key to be able to systematically move my crane. So between zero and 10, I don't actually want any movement. So I'm gonna move my timeline to 10, and then I'm going to click set keys with my components selected. That will create a key at point 10 capturing their current position. I'm then going to turn on auto key and I'm going to move to frame 50. And at frame 50, I want to grab the bottom and I want to, uh, sorry, not the bottom. I want to grab the first cylinder and I'm going to move it up. Just so that it's at the end of that first, uh, first extension. If I turn off auto key and show you what that's done, is we now have that movement. Between zero and 10, there's no movement. And between 10 and 50, we have that movement. And it will simply do a slight ramp up with regards to its speed at the start and a slight ramp down with regards to its speed at the end. We then want to move this second component. So for this component and this component, at frame 50, we want to add a key because they haven't done anything since frame 10. If I just turned on auto key, we would get the next part of the animation from 
the previous frame 10. So I'm starting at 50 and I'm going up to frame 100. And at frame 100, I'm going to turn on auto key and I'm going to move this cylinder up. Once again, I'm just going to eyeball it so that it's roughly at the end of our crane, like so. Turn off auto key, go back to the start, and we can see that we now have a two point animation. First extension, second extension. From there, I want to rotate the topmost part of the crane down, then the bottommost part of the crane down, but as two separate movements. So let's select the top cylinder and the top component and make sure that their last key was at key 100. We want to hit set key again. You see this red here, that's a translation, a movement, whereas we also have green for rotation and blue for scale. Because when I used auto key, I only moved them, it's only placed a translation key in there. If I just go to frame 150 and turn on auto key and rotate, my rotate would have effect from frame 50. So where you're starting, click the plus to add a key. That will add the other keys in there for rotation and scale as well. We can then go to key 150. We can turn on auto key and selecting just our cylinder, I'm going to rotate that all the way around about 120 degrees. From there, I'm going to select this cylinder and this component. I'm going to add a key at 140, because I want them to start moving before this one has finished. And I'm going to say, add a key. Turn on auto key, go to where you want the animation to finish. Let's say 190. Select this component, and we're going to rotate it round by 90 degrees. If I now turn off auto key, select my components in total, add a key manually at 200, meaning that nothing happens between 190 and 200. Select our bottommost cylinder. And then what I want to do is auto key between 20 and 25. I'm going to do a full rotation on the bed of this crane. If I turn off auto key, go back to the start of my animation and press play, we have a very simple animation of our crane working with keyframes all linked together and rigged up nicely. Should you want to make modifications, simply select the components that you want to make the modifications to. Remember we have the links here, so if I just want to change the speed of that last spin, which was quite fast, I'm just going to select this component. I'm going to click and drag the green key here all the way to 250. In other words, I'm going to half or, or double half the speed, sorry, or, of that last spin. So you can make adjustments on the fly to change the animation as you see fit. And really, within 15 minutes or so, you've learned the basics of starting to animate your components using the timeline and creating links to rig your components together and create your own animated rigs. I really hope that's been useful and I will catch you next time. Thank you.